Cool. Um, okay, so just a quick reminder to everyone, uh, Beijing Hackfest is going to be in about a week and a half, June 19th and 20th. Uh, this is in tandem with the LC3 event happening in Beijing, where we will also have a blockchain track. Uh, great news, we have already hit 100 registrations as of yesterday. Uh, I believe we'll be uh, above that today. So really, really excited to see the engagement and interest there. Um, Brian, it sounded like you were on. Uh, do you want to just give a, a quick one minute, um, uh, just kind of how we're, we're approaching this and anything that the community can do to help and kind of how the TWGC is engaging in this? Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, it looks like, um, you know, we will have some core, core uh, 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 maintainer presence there, uh, but uh, <clears throat> largely it'll be new developers to the community. And so I think we'll skew a bit more uh, towards the kind of introductory kind of talks and, and, and you know, getting helping people get up to speed on a you know, developer environment and that sort of thing. Um, and, and I'll try to lead a session as well on participating in open source communities. Uh, the, t the Technical Working Group China has also been engaged in um, both taking on leadership of sessions and, uh, uh, and recruiting as well for the event. So that's been really good to see. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited. This will be a great opportunity to bring developers on. If folks just want to watch you know, the mailing list because there might be, or the pull request um, streams because there might be a higher than average number of of requests or questions coming in, um, uh, that would be that'd probably be pretty helpful. Uh, but uh, you know, other than that, I'd say I'm really excited, and and I think the folks who are going out are, are um, and traveling to it uh, are are excited too. So yeah, great. Thanks. Uh, and any questions from anyone on this? Will there be? I I can't attend in person. Will there be ways? Or, you know, is there a need for us to re attend remotely? So at I one think, point, we, yeah, when ahead. we were considering making the, uh, like having a, a hackathon the weekend before, which we've decided not to do, um, there was some notion of maybe having the folks from outside uh, who couldn't attend in person help process the stream of what uh, we were hoping would be like pull requests and, and other fixes. Probably not going to see that this time, um, but uh, uh, nor are we setting up because it is kind of hard to do from a hack fest, you know, um, any sort of remote participation. Um, but uh, uh, again, certainly if you see a stream of, of stuff come in, uh, it'd be great to, uh, if you do want to help uh, being able to be responsive to some of those questions um, would, I think, be, be really helpful to the people there. I know it's uh, time zones are off too, but, uh, um, you know, an answer overnight uh, from Monday to Tuesday could still end up being pretty helpful. Great. Uh, if if no other questions on that, uh, onward, uh, looking at future hack, uh, HackFest planning, um, we are tentatively thinking August and October would be the next uh, logical uh, timeframes, thinking U.S. and Europe as well. But want to understand from the technical community here what's going to be valuable in terms of time frame and location. Uh, we do have a couple of companies in, in uh, both U.S. and Europe that could potentially host uh, in these rough time frames. Um, but want to understand the interest here first. For the TSC members on the call, uh, if we were to do something in the August time frame in U uh, U.S. or October in Europe, are those things that you would attend? Yes. This is so much. Um, I certainly would. Yep. Looks like Ben is a yes as well. Uh, Hart, Dan, August. Chris. October for sure. Uh, August, I'm not sure. Okay. <clears throat> This is Greg. I can say I can't make the. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I said August is usually uh, the summer uh, doldrums. Yeah. Uh, That's how I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I I think August is. Well, I'm on vacation the last, uh, I guess, week or week and a half or whatever of August. Anyway. Um, and I suspect a lot of people are taking holiday in August. Fair so, enough. If we were to push into early September, does that sound like that would be a bit better, uh, assuming we dodged any of the industry conferences? And Labor Day. 
Uh, yes. After Labor Day, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> school year. All right. Um, okay. We that, could, yeah, we could look to that. I, I know, Brian, you are going to be in, in uh, New York in, in August. And like I said, I, I'll be there too, but on vacation. <laughs> Uh, does, you know, we've, we've kind of got a heartbeat going of once every two months, which um, has felt valuable to kind of keep to that heartbeat. Um, the only thing I'd suggest about August is maybe earlier on the August side. I do recognize it's when all of Europe goes on vacation um, for the entire month. So uh, having it in Europe, I know that might be not not the best time to have it there. But, uh, um, you know, mid we could we could do it mid-August, East Coast, but we could also delay it by a month or we can skip by a month. Um, I tend towards the idea of sticking to the heartbeat, um, but, uh, uh, and, and, you know, no, at no time is it ideal for everybody. Um, but that, you know, it, it, when you start slipping or can't, or, or skipping, um, it just becomes too easy to, uh, to lose the momentum is my concern. So I think we can do it pretty inexpensively in mid August on the East coast with a number of the options that we have. So I, I, I just make the pitch for for mid-August East Coast. The heartbeat is all right, but the point is that uh, conference, that Hackfest may not have a heartbeat then because nobody uh, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it may not have a pulse is what you're saying. It may be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, would, it, would it be they, useful uh, to be more systematic? Would it be useful to be more systematic about this by having kind of a poll and and driving, you know, like with a range of dates and locations and then driving the TSC and, and others to to kind of flesh out commitments, but uh but in theory kind of thing. Yeah, if you could sort of you know, if we could do a doodle poll yep. and um you know, pick pick a date. Don't don't ask for dates, but you know, just sort of pick a date and see if we can get you know, 50 people or something, and maybe that's worthwhile. Cool. I'll, I'll get a doodle out for uh, looking at the U.S. version, um, kind of spanning uh, a couple options, August and September, uh, and then we can look at Europe as well, and we'll move this forward. But it sounds like in general terms there's interest, uh, more just kind of optimizing on the date for it. And I think, you know, we just wanted to do a check-in and make sure that the TSC found value in kind of a regular face-to-face -face gathering like this, um, not just for outreach, but also for core maintainers and for cross-project collaboration. Um, uh, and, you know, we could always find ways to associate it with, say, consensus or with other larger conferences some of us are likely to be at anyways, but I um, uh, just wanted to make sure, yes, there's still desire, there's still there's still energy for, for this kind of thing. Cricket worry me. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I, I I can get a doodle pull out. Uh, we can we can gauge interest that way uh, as well, and uh, circle back next week with some of the results that we see from that, and hopefully that'll spur some discussion too. All right, uh, Chris, if nothing else, do you want to move on to the security bug handling process stuff? I know we chatted on that a couple of weeks ago and uh, a revised draft went out. Do we have a quorum? Uh, we are at quorum now. Greg is here, so we've got eight of 11. Perfect, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess is Tracy gonna review the... Um... So sure, I, I can do that, Chris. So uh, the... The proposal that Dave has put onto the um, agenda is to have a process for reporting security bugs. Uh, and that process in general um, does two things. It uh, specifies that each of the projects has to have two members, uh, two maintainers that can handle uh, security bugs and be on the security team. And then the second piece is to actually define what the process is. And that process is taken, uh, looks like um, verbatim from the Apache process for reporting security bugs. 
uh, and then what happens after that bug is reported, uh, whether it's accepted, rejected, and how it's handled as far as uh, committing code and, and making sure that nobody knows that it's for a security issue and how we go about reporting it um, after the fact through uh, the CVE process. Uh, so that's really what this uh, proposal is about. Um, it has been brought up here before and uh, has been put out onto the list for review. And I think, uh, I think what we're looking for is, is really, do we have agreement that this is the right process to go forward uh, for reporting security bugs? So I had a quick question about this. Um, so I asked last time what we were doing to define a security bug versus a non-security bug. Um, and so the definition of a security bug here is, you know, any bug that adversely affects the function of a, functioning of the software product. So this kind of seems like any bug to me. Um, is, is there any way we can delineate more clearly what's a security bug and what's not? Um, so I, I think Dave had in the uh, document, <clears throat> and it's, uh, I read it this morning, um, that it was basically uh, a bug that allowed any actor, whether trusted or not, to uh, make the system, um, to compromise the system, right? Uh, and, and so uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, what we would do to kind of make that more specific. Um, any some degree, yeah. I'm sorry, Tracy. Um, I, I some degree we're at the mercy of the bug reporter um, making a judgment call uh, as to whether that bug represents a violation of access. Um, uh, you know, and and fits fits the definition that probably we should try to have. I mean, certainly we should have the the process posted publicly and fairly clearly so that even somebody not deeply involved in the development processes of our different projects knows how to report a security vulnerability when they find one. Um, and so given that it's clear, it probably will also state those criteria, but we're still somewhat, you know, you know depending upon that, that reporter to report it accurately. Um, well, and I think we just have to live with that with the prospect of both non-security bugs coming in through this channel and with security bugs coming in through public channels um, and, and just rational ways to respond to those. And the other thing that the, the process did say is that the security team would review each of the security bugs as they came in and either accept or reject um, the bug. So I think, you know, not only is it the reporter, it's also the security team that's uh, being formed that's going to have kind of a um, decision making over whether or not they think this is truly a security bug or not. Yeah, so I'm confident the security team will get it right. I just I just want to make sure we have a place uh, so that public bug reporters, uh, you know, do like a reasonably good job in determining whether a bug is a security bug or not. <clears throat> so, I think, though, the heart what you're really getting to is what that the group that's triaging has more work to do if people are putting in things that aren't really security bugs. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, bad things happen both ways, right? If if people put in, if every bug becomes a security bug, then the security triage team has to figure out what's real and what's not. And if kind of everyone just submits bugs through the public channel, then that's not good either, right? Um, well, right, but we can't make people do the right thing. Um, I think in practice, it hasn't become a problem for most pro for any project that I know of, um, and I'm willing to consider problems, you know, <laughs> situations I don't know about. But uh, generally, you, you find, especially if it's phrased correctly on the website, you know, that that neither neither extreme gets hit. And uh, if 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 you do see lots of non-security bugs coming in, that's a sign you need to tune the language for more clearly. Um, but I think that is, that's a, a risk to take or a price to pay for the security team 
is to recognize they may have to filter, you know, uh, stuff that isn't security related. It's a price to pay to get the stuff that truly is. Yeah. The only, the only okay. thing that I would, um, I, I, I think that, you know, Brian, that what it does suggest though, is that whatever page we direct people to from this, and I was just looking to see what, um, you know, where we actually sent people. And I don't know if it's just a function of, um, I, I mean, I, I get directed to jira hyperledger.org slash secure slash dashboard. And that puts me at the fabric dashboard, which is probably not where we want to send people. I don't know if there is another dashboard or if the secure dashboard is, it's my default dashboard. So I guess what I'm saying is whatever page we direct people to, it should be open to everybody. And there should be a way when I try to create a bug, there should be a way to designate that this is a security defect in the bug creation step. And we should be giving them specific instructions. If it's a security bug, do this, otherwise do that right there when they come to the page so that they are at least presented with some instructions. We can't, again, we can't make them, but we can certainly try and lead them to the trough. Oh, well, it should be as streamlined and as few choices as possible. Like it should be, here's, here's the, the, the hot button, um, then describe the problem, what you tried to do to re reproduce, you know, um, and maybe go straight into JIRA in a, in a secure, um, you know, group, but it shouldn't just dump somebody onto a dashboard or, or something um, right. that they have to then navigate to figure out. It should be, you know, time is of the essence at that point. So, right. Um, I think, I yeah. think that's right. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can, you know, we can certainly have, um, I mean, Tracy, maybe you and Dave could work with Rye to figure out how to get it so that we can actually have a link off of each project's page that takes them to the appropriate um, so uh, when I click the link, it, it takes me to something like slash secure slash dashboard, and that happens to just bring up things that are uh, in my sawtooth queue. Yeah, that's, so that's be user right. Dependent. Right. It brought up my default dashboard, which is the fabric dashboard. So it's doing the same thing for you. Yeah. That, that sounds like that would be fixed. Needs to be fixed. And by the way, the, uh, the, a, a small um, suggestion, maybe you should put the, what is a security bug before you start talking about reporting security bugs in the document, uh, you know. It's not a matter of in the document, uh, Vipin. I think it's wherever we put a thing. Yeah, yeah. You're to, I, know, I know you're talking about how to, uh, how to drive people into the right place where to put the security bug, but even, since we started off with the document, I'm saying, you know, what is a security bug should come before you say anything about reporting security bugs or security bug triage or any of that stuff. That oh, I agree with you, Ben. Oh, so moving what is a security bug up to the top? Yeah. That's so that way you frame what it is about from the get go. Uh, we can do that. That's easy enough. But this uh, this uh, sort of guidance towards um, reporting, uh, you know, this it starts off right in this uh, document, and maybe. Uh, Maybe some more cri I mean, I don't know how, how much more you can say about what is a security bug. I mean, like Hart mentioned, just like pornography, we know it when we see it. Well, it, you know, again, I, I think, you know, as, as, as Brian said, it'll, it, there's no way to make it perfect, right? I think the, the simplest definition is going to be the one that makes the most, uh, that has the most effect. And most people, when they want to report a security vulnerability, they know what they're doing, right? I, I don't agree. Think I, agree. I mean, I you know, sure, somebody is going to report something in JIRA and not mark it as a security bug, and somebody else is going to go, oh, my God. And then quickly they're going to annotate it and say it's a security bug, and it comes off 
the visibility from everybody else and then it gets dealt with, right? I mean, it's, that's just how these things have to work. Sure, we have to be practical. Yes. So Modulo, Modulo needing to have a streamlined security bug re reporting form and Modulo some documentation notes or some changes to how it gets described on the public website. Are there other comments on the proposal that would you know, hold it from being approved? Um, I don't have a problem with the process itself. I do think, though, that we want to make sure that um, somebody is addressing the uh, actual reporting mechanism. <clears throat> and I think that the other piece of it, Brian, would be that we want this to be on the hyperledger.org slash project slash sawtooth slash, you know, pages. Yes, it should be very prominent, both not project wide and per project. Yeah, I mean, uh, hyperledger wide and per project. Yeah. So I, I have uh, no no problem with the, the basic mechanism, but I had a question about process. You know, the very first section mentions, you know, users can file bugs to JIRA, but I was thinking, won't that make it public if the goal is to keep it private until it's fixed? So there is, <clears throat> sorry, uh, there is a flag uh, that has been uh, added to the JIRA reporting mechanism that allows somebody to choose whether or not it's a security bug. Uh, oh. If that flag, if that flag is uh, checked, then only the security team has access to it and it is not public uh, to the rest of uh, the world. Um, now, yeah. as Chris mentioned, right, if somebody didn't click that, then uh, we're going to have to make sure that we see that and click it uh, to hide it from uh, the world. Right, but my point earlier um, was, Tracy, was that there's no flag on the create issue dialog. Well, there's not? I, I thought that had been added. Uh, I don't see it. Okay, I'll make sure that, uh, I'll, I'll talk with Rye about that, because I, uh, I thought it was there. I mean, unless we're defining a new type of issue called a security bug, but that's not a choice either. Okay, I'll check um, because I thought he had uh, put that in there, so um, I'll check with him. Well, Maybe. there is a, if, if you go to a created defect. Then you can click it? No, you can't click it, but it's there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, okay. <laughs> Gotcha. Stop splitting hairs, Chris. <laughs> You're a security a member of a security team for Fabric. That's why you can see it. Um, well, but that um, actually, it's not on everyone. I thought it was. I've seen it. I I know I've seen it, but I know I also couldn't touch it. Maybe it's bugs created after a certain date. Security level, not a security issue. Edit. Uh, issue type bug, reporter, components, priority. There is no way that I can see to edit that field. Okay. So it can't be edited and, um, and it can't be set. So I, I don't know where, I don't know how this is happening. So from a process perspective, I don't have a problem but from a implementation perspective with needs work. Gotcha. I don't know, Todd, you want to take a, does anybody else have any comments or concerns about the, let's just focus on the process and then obviously I think um, uh, Tracy and, and, and Dave have a little bit of work to do to implement it. Okay, Todd. 
uh, code. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so with those few tweaks um, running through, uh, Arnaud? Yeah, no, I, I think this is good. We may have to do some tweaking down the line, but this is no different than anything else. So for now, I'm in support of this for sure. Cool. Uh, ben? Uh, yes. Chris? Yep. Dan? Yes. Greg? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mick? Yes. Richard? I saw Richard on the earlier. Uh, Tomash? Yes. All right. Uh, Richard would have been nine. So uh, with uh, Tomash, that is eight, which is quorum and uh, unanimous. Kyoki. Thanks, guys. Um, any other topics? Anything people want to bring up that we hadn't already? I just about? wanted to mention there's a doodle poll out for the performance and scale working group times. Um, and if team leads of other working groups could make sure that there's someone from their team on the performance and scale working group, that would be great. Thanks, Mark. By the way, Dan, we've been looking at your sawtooth page and we're very jealous over here at the fabric team. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, I guess we're um, going to give half an hour back to everybody. So everybody uh, enjoy your weekend. Yay. Likewise. Thanks, Captain Drew. See you. Thanks, Thank you. Everyone.